So aloha and welcome everybody to this spontaneous Uranian Reiki share for the Aquarius full moon. I am so very grateful for all of you who decided to join live and those who are joining our circle later on through the recordings. I felt very inspired to host a live gathering instead of doing like a pre-recorded video about this particular full moon. It just happened that I was very busy and really didn't have time. And what I was feeling very excited and inspired to do was actually host this Reiki share. So we'll see if I continue and, and do more, but certainly want to let you know that I will be hosting another distant Reiki share for the Virgo new moon and that will be on September 2nd. So if you're able to join live, certainly come and join live. Love to have you there. And the recordings for the Reiki shares will always be posted also to my YouTube channel afterward and that's Taylor Norris Reiki. So you can always revisit the recordings later on if you'd like. I do have some spaces available for one-on-one -on -one sessions, Reiki sessions, and a variety of astrology readings. I think I have a couple left in August, and then I have some that are sprinkled throughout the weeks further on. So if you've been wanting a Reiki session or an astrology reading, definitely check out those offerings on my website. On So in September, I will be teaching another Astrology Basics with Reiki class. I don't have it scheduled as an event yet, but what I'm thinking is most likely it'll be Saturday, September 21st. And I will certainly send out an email and let everybody know when the registration, when, when that opens up. And on September 28th, 29th, I'll be teaching a Holy Fire 3 World Peace Reiki 1 and 2 class. So if you're interested in that, check that out. And it's suitable for beginners or if you want to retake in the Holy Fire lineage. Or maybe you've had a Reiki training in another lineage and you're interested in learning Holy Fire and actually connecting with a whole other frequency of Reiki energy that is very, very powerful and very, very wonderful. So you can learn more about all of that on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. Okay, so a little bit about what's going on today as we record this Reiki share and we gather together. It's August 18th. And we have the sun conjunct Mercury, or really it's Mercury retrograde conjoining our sun in Leo. And this is occurring at 26 degrees, 35 minutes of the sign of Leo. And it's actually conjoining a star that is like the star of the show <laughs> for today, for our full moon, certainly. And that is the star that I feel incredibly inspired to really hone in on for our Reiki journey, which we will be taking after we talk about the astrology. And this is Alphard star in Hydra constellation. And I've got a slide that shows you what that looks like in the sky that we will look at in just a little while. So our planetary abundance and manifestation blessings energies are very, very potent. And interestingly, I pulled two cards from my Beyond Lemuria card deck this morning. And one of them was Manifestia, all about manifestation, and also alignment. And that's where I really see this Venus opposite Saturn is like, is it aligned? Is it really like a solid manifestation of practical and spiritual value and worthwhileness? And big dreams and big visions are definitely supported and encouraged here. The bigness coming through this uh, Venus square to Jupiter too. So being able to see the bigger picture 
and feel really inspired and grateful and excited about what's possible as we align more and more and really harness the healing and evolution of our own inner worlds that can increasingly be reflected in our outer worlds and outer realities as well. And in the spirit of all the Gemini energy we've been having with Mars and Gemini and Jupiter, of course, and Gemini as well, those two conjoining uh, recently, and then just Jupiter really holding, holding it down in Gemini for the next little under a year, I've got this affirmation, the affirmation, the power of affirmations, always a great technique to work with. But I would say with the Gemini energy so strong, uh, they could be extra magical where we say words and they turn into reality even more than usual. So I am a magical creator is a affirmation that came to mind for this, but certainly play with the power of your own words and affirmations. So this is a chart of our Aquarius full moon. It's at 27 degrees, 14 minutes of Aquarius zodiac sign. And it's occurring exactly in about just over 24 hours from the time we are recording this. So 8.26 a.m. Hawaii time on August 19th. You'll need to adjust to your time zone to know that exactitude. But it's certainly already lighting up the night sky. There was so much light in the sky last night, I noticed, from the full moon. And I needed some extra uh, dream tea to help me sleep and settle down because it is planet Uranus is the ruler, the modern ruler of the full moon in Aquarius. And it's a very zingy, electrical, stimulating kind of energy. And, you know, this this is probably a full moon that I would say we would really like extra, extra feeling it. And the the dynamics of it are really interesting too. So with this full moon, you know, not only ruled by planet Uranus, got the glyph of Uranus here for astrology students to be aware of uh, planet Uranus being the ruler, but also in a square alignment to the full moon. So what would already be a typically Uranian full moon experience is, is extra potent, is extra highlighted by this particular configuration. And what is that about? That's about change. That's about newness. That's about innovation, the future vision, humanitarian, the community, the soul tribe, gathering together with soul family, you know, your chosen family, like-hearted, like-minded individuals and dreaming in a better world, a better future, a higher reality, and really empowering the higher frequencies of what's possible moving forward. This is also very like awakening type of energy. So embodying our spiritual awakening even more with Uranus in the sign of Taurus, speaking of the body and speaking of also bringing it into reality, into form, and being inspired to do that and be aware of the ways that we have done that, are doing it, and even some ideas for other applications and extensions of that. So, the full moon, this is conjunct the star I already mentioned. So the sun in Leo, Mercury retrograde in Leo, conjunct star Alphard in Hydra constellation, and the moon exactly opposite. And what's also interesting here, so Uranus, the ruler, is conjunct a star called Al Ghul. And these two stars in particular have very strong goddess energies, very strong divine feminine energies, 
and kundalini awakening energies, memories, memories, keys and codes and wisdom of the earth and what's been stored in our bodies and our cellular memory and what we can wake up and activate and actualize at this time that a lot of that latent or dormant potential can be powerfully awoken with our conscious choice, with our free will, with saying yes to the possibilities. And many different memories can come in and experiences come in to be integrated and expressed even more powerfully and consciously. So a lot of the unconscious can become more conscious, more of the soul consciousness, more of the spirit consciousness, more of your own multidimensional self and the ways that you can say yes to embracing change and innovation and freedom and liberation and the new paradigm. That's all very, very supported. And even in the timing of this, so, you know, our Jupiter Saturn square is coming in exactitude very closely after this full moon. And so there's energy to think and remember Jupiter, see the bigger vision and Saturn and Pisces like implement how can this actually last? How can it focus? Because Jupiter and Gemini, oh my gosh, I have this syndrome so much, is, is like, I want to do all the things and I want to do them now instantaneously and like very fast. Gemini is a very, very fast sign. And with Mars there, that's been very energized, like the speed, the gas, let's go, let's do more, more, more ideas, inspiration, say yes, say yes. And Saturn is helping us pick like, okay, what do you want to focus on? What's your next step? You know, what's what's the real priority here? And what's the longer term plan? Like what's the immediate need? And then what's the next step? And maybe that's a month out. And next step beyond that, maybe that's more like the three to six month plan. So Saturn can really, really help us focus and hone in on priorities and implement some of these ideas, very expansive ideas that Jupiter and Gemini has been helping us become more aware of. And Mars and Gemini too has been helping us actually like manifest and create and do the work that's needed. So I see this as a very supportive square and it's actually part of a T-square configuration as Venus is opposite Saturn. So we have Venus and Virgo opposite Saturn and Pisces, and both are in square to this Jupiter and Gemini. And so Venus and Saturn are actually highlighting one of my very favorite stars, Echernar star, in Eridanus constellation, the river of life, the starry river of life. And this is bringing in that flow energy very, very powerfully. Trust the flow. Trust the wisdom of your body. Trust the wisdom of nature. Trust the invisible, that spirit has your back, that source has your back, that the divine has your back and all shall be manifested in the divine timing that it's okay to trust yourself and the, the greater flow and allow yourself to be in that greater flow, even as it's taking you into new territory, which it is. And hopefully it, it is. And you're saying yes to that and, and trusting as you find yourself in in the new, in the new terrain, in the new territory for what's next in your evolution. So really extraordinary star there with Achernar and Jupiter Mars also really highlighting the Orion energy. So this is where the duality of mind can be very strong. I know I experienced this myself very powerfully in the last week. And that's part of the Orion trauma healing is the extremely polarized mind, the experience of that going from good to bad, 
fear to love and just having the the mental body in that state of duality that's really uncomfortable and is a trauma residue from experiences in other star systems, Orion specifically, but also has been carried on to the earth. And it's time to really let go of them. And I think that's even Saturn and Pisces conjunct the star and the river of life. It's like, let's let go of those so that, you know, none of that, that trauma need to be repeated. And even inviting it was inviting it or I was witnessing Reiki release and kind of turn off those genetics and the DNA that was linking into that reality and those programs that no longer serve my highest good and seeing how the energy can really support in doing that and also bringing in the gifts and talents, the mastery, the possibilities and the upgrades in genetics and DNA and all the different you know, molecular cofactors and all the things in our in our body and our physical technology of our our sacred body temples that can support higher consciousness in very physical, real, tangible ways. So definitely being mindful of that if that's a part of your experience that, you know, that that is a a possible energy now and and that many of us are experiencing it too. So even if maybe you're not experiencing it that much, somebody else in your life or in your sphere may be really experiencing that polarized consciousness and to have compassion for yourself if that's you and then for others as well to ground yourself and center yourself as much as you need to, that that can be really, really helpful. So many other stars, we look at the galactic chart, it's like, this is, you know, quite the lineup of, you know, so much Alphard, we have the super galactic center here, we have the great attractor. And that's worth mentioning too, that the great attractor is the point that is not occupied in this T-square. So we have Venus and Virgo, Saturn and Pisces, and then we have Jupiter and Gemini. And when there's a T-square like that, there's a point that would make it a grand cross or a grand square. And it's around 17 to 18 degrees of the sign Sagittarius. And within that degree range is actually the great attractor. So this is another one of those very potent, powerful black hole cosmic creator forces that can help us release and clear what needs to be released and cleared and also remember and connect with universal truth, universal wisdom, multiversal truth and wisdom and higher knowledge and that what might be really supportive at this time if the energy feels very tense and locked and too much is going on a journey, Sagittarius, looking at the higher meaning, looking at the the philosophical aspects, studying the metaphysics and, you know, going on a pilgrimage. And this could be one like what we're about to do, a Reiki journey, a shamanic journey, a meditation experience where, you know, drumming with sound, you pick what that might be but a way to connect and experience those higher states of consciousness and really expand into what's possible and and do the healing work that's needed at this time and also be open to the blessings and awakening that's possible as well. So many other stars here, yeah, Super Galactic Center speaking to ancestral healing, having support from the reticulum, alpha reticulum for kind of creating that that better future of a healed, healthy, organic humanity, uh, an ascended humanity. I like to connect the reticulum to like the, the descendants and the ascendants, the ones who come after us, but but also ascend and and make it and figure out how to do life on earth and really cool ways and and become very 
very embodied and very realized in their multi-galactic nature as earthlings and as galactic beings. So beautiful. There's much to say, but I'll just leave it there. So I also want to talk about some of the transits that are coming up. So the sun square Uranus that's activated at this full moon, but it perfects on August 19th. The, the full moon, of course, perfecting August 19th as well. <laughs> Jupiter square Saturn, also August 19th. Are you noticing this is like a very big day, right? Uh, tomorrow, there's a lot, a lot happening here. This will be very, very interesting. On the 22nd, the sun enters Virgo, and, and this feels like very supportive for grounding <laughs> practicalities, physical realities. What are the details that need tending to? Also, discernment with all of this Gemini energy and talk, 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 and ideas and active minds. Um, sun entering Virgo could really help us be very discerning with what's true, what's false, what's real, what's fake. And just to have that, that clarity, the light of clarity, the light of the divine mind. This makes me think of the mental emotional symbol and Reiki there with sun entering Virgo. August 22nd, also we have Venus square Mars. So this could be really a, quite a constructive time period as well. This is Mars and Gemini square, Venus in Virgo. So having ideas, implementing those ideas step by step and, and really pacing ourselves with that. On the 24th, Mars sextile Chiron, this is beautiful, active healing energy gifts, brought to us by Chiron into our more of our masculine energetic bodies. And this, this also feels very, very supportive for our healing, for our independence, for our sovereignty being more embodied physically and mentally. On the 26th, we have Venus trine Uranus. So this is more of that Uranian energy. And really it's like building even more Uranian energy as we finish August and enter September. And this could be sudden, sudden changes in value, financial changes as well, more globally. Uh, this could be money from unexpected sources. This is very sweet and supportive for manifestation as Venus will be in Virgo and Uranus and Taurus. So again, thinking about connecting to nature, connecting to your feminine side, and really being open to receive Venus, this awakened energy, Uranus. August 28th, I'm pretty excited about this date. I saw this, I was like, wow, this, this has the feeling of like, we are the champions, <laughs> um, which probably wouldn't be anybody else's interpretation of this, but I'm seeing this and I'm like, oh, this is really, really awesome. So we have Venus at the very last degree of, of Virgo opposite Neptune and Pisces. And at the same time, we're having Mercury station direct. So it's the end of the Mercury retrograde period. Mercury will then begin traveling forward from our perspective here on earth stationing direct at 21 degrees 24 minutes of leo but this is like more of that manifestation energy more of that spiritual connection embodiment practical service spiritual services could be very creative energy very aesthetic very inspired and definitely a time to like connect with your art connect with nature be really kind to yourself you know take some time to rest and tune in you know do a reading for yourself do a reiki session for yourself treat yourself to some some really cozy juicy time in your spiritual practice and a lot of 
ideas and connecting the dots could also be occurring at that time with Mercury's energy so strong as it stations direct. So there could be lots of insights, downloads, inspirations around the 28th. So definitely lean into those possibilities. On the 29th, we have an energetic change with Venus entering Libra. Venus will be at home in the sign of Libra. So this is also very positive, whereas Venus in Virgo is more of like a priestess energy. It's more of the, the kind of shape shifter, time traveler energy a little bit. And with Venus in Libra, it's, it's very beautiful, aesthetic, lovely design this and that will look good together. And this is also very fair and balanced and justice oriented as well with Venus and Libra. On the 29th as well, Venus trine Pluto. So this is another opportunity to really be connecting in with soul consciousness, more of our, our mental body downloads and ideas and connections to what has been unconscious being more highlighted and revealed at this time. This could be very, very powerful um, as well in terms of our values, our self-worth, um, financial considerations as well, and, and really feeling our sense of value and worth very, very powerfully too at this time. So a couple of different affirmations came in for this kind of a very broad stroke summary for all of all of these little Gemini tidbits. I welcome the change as a really great affirmation for all this Uranian energy, as well as I receive the map for navigating the new reality. And that is speaking to all of the mutable energy we are experiencing now with the signs of Gemini and Sagittarius, as well as Virgo and Pisces, with all that mutable, changing, adapting, fluid kind of energy, it's it can be ungrounding. And it can be ungrounding in a good way with Uranus and Taurus. It's like wants to shake things up, wants to invite in that change, but it can be a little disorienting, ungrounding at times, and really empowering that you're receiving that map for navigating the new reality and, and trusting as you receive that. So more Uran Uranus coming up, as I said, September 1st, Uranus stations retrograde at 27 degrees, 15 minutes of Taurus zodiac sign. So definitely check out, do you have any planets or points around 27 of the fixed signs would be feeling it the most. So this would be even really like 25 to 29 degrees of Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius would be feeling this Uranus energy very, very powerfully working with us. I know this is me. <laughs> I have placements in those degree points, which is why I'm choosing to be Uranus. <laughs> be the change, invite in the change. And Uranus, so as it is one of the more outer planets, its retrograde period is longer. So it's all the way from September 1st until January 30th of 2025. So the rest of the year, Uranus will be retrograde. And it's really that innovative, change, future-oriented, galactic contact consciousness uh, community-oriented Uranian energy being directed inward. So how can you internalize all of that and, and come to know it as an alive energetic signature within yourself? And Uranus, this whole retrograde is happening within the sign of Taurus. And so this very simple mantra came up with, or really what I heard was I co-create heaven on earth is a, a beautiful one to work with for this retrograde. And lastly, as promised, this is the Alphard star here in the heart of the serpent Hydra. You see Hydra constellation. It's very long. 
It is a serpentine constellation connected to the Holy Grail. <laughs> this cup of wisdom connected to dragon energy, serpent energy, kundalini energy. And what I've become aware of too, it's very connected on the earth to Tibet and the Himalayas, Shangri-La, Shambhala, Jambudvipa, like these enlightened realms and enlightened societies upon the earth, orders of you know monastics and wisdom keepers who really kept the knowledge and the wisdom and lived these long, long lives of mastery and wisdom and you know, longevity and so much spiritual realization within the span of one human lifetime, that this is part of that Alphard and Hydra consciousness and that's been alive and activated and present on the earth in our history, but is also that there are civilizations and societies like that very abundantly within the worlds and planets connected to this constellation and the star system. That's what's been coming in for me about this. I do have very strong natal placements here. Um, my South Node and my Mars are both conjunct Alphard, and I was actually having a nodal reversal. I think it was a note. Yes, it was when the, the North Node was in Leo and it was conjoining my South Node and my Mars. And at that time, I was actually taking monastic vows and staying at a Tibetan monastery and learning about Tibetan shamanism and Tibetan monasticism. And it was such a portal and window into other lifetimes and Reflecting on it now, I can see a clear linkage uh, between those types of earth experiences and this particular star system, that there is just so much knowledge and wisdom and, and spiritual realization within this star system. And that is just a little bit of it. You know, that's not to say that that's, that's all that's possible within the star. So definitely open yourself up to experiences, to memories, and that's what we will be doing in the journey. But that's really what's come alive for me in connecting those dots. And um, I was aware of that a few years ago. And then kind of the way all my Gemini works is like, I'll be aware of something and I'll like forget about it for a while. And I'm like, gosh, I don't know anything about Hydra. Then I'm like, oh, I did I already remember all of this about Hydra. And then I was in the energy this morning and all of that was waking back up within me. I was like, yeah, you already remembered this, but here, here's some expanded memories beyond that. So really interested what you might experience in the journey as we connect to this Alphard consciousness as it can has been man Can I ask a question? Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. I have square Archonar and Vertex. Does that mean I've kind of made sure I couldn't have my memory for a while and this might be a potential to get it back? This is certainly a potential for all of us to reclaim memories, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Set that as an intention for this journey. I think let's go into our journey now. Close your eyes and take some deep breaths. Turn your awareness inward. And notice your breath breathing in your body your heart beating in your body, your beautiful physical human body made of the earth, made of the heavens, made of the material and energy of all that is. 
You are the universe and the universe is you. Relax and let go. Be open to receive the light of Reiki flowing in from the highest heavens of consciousness, flowing into your crown chakra, streaming down your body, flowing into your third eye chakra, flowing through your entire body, flowing into your throat chakra, your heart chakra, activating your heart light. Your heart light shines in all directions. As Reiki wakes up within your solar plexus chakra, activating the sun within you, your power center, the power of love awakened here at the core of your being, at the core of your body. Reiki flows from the highest heavens of consciousness into your sacral chakra and into your root chakra. The light of Reiki awakens within your hand chakras and your feet chakras and flows throughout all the meridians of your body, the nadis, of your body, the energy channels, and all of the energy centers within you, the smaller chakras, all the wheels of energy within you, all of your cells and tissues and organs and organ systems, the amazing technology that you are, the technology of creation, so much potential, so much wisdom, awakening within you, alive within you, pulsating within you, gently activating and waking up within you as the light of Reiki floods your entire system smoothly, Gently, deeply, and powerfully, fully, and completely. And your colors come alive. All of your colors, the colors of the earth and the colors of creation. Red and orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo. Violet, magenta and turquoise, lime green and gold, coral, the darker shades and the lighter shades, all the gradients and the hues of you come alive, vibrating with energy vibrating with unconditional love, the metallic tones, silver and gold and copper, bronze, platinum. The frequency of balance fills your breath and fills your body, bringing in the divine light of harmony, the grace of compassion, forgiveness as the light of the earth rises beneath you supporting you nourishing you holding you loving you unconditionally with such purity and such all-encompassing truth you are held in love you are held by the earth Receive the divine frequencies of Earth Mother and Mother Nature. You are a part of nature. 
You are a part of the flow of the earth and the flow of nature, nature's rhythms and nature's cycles, planetary cycles, earth cycles and moon cycles, the cycles of the elements, all alive and awakened within you, brought into balance, brought into harmony, and brought into greater conscious awareness, the information, the remembrance, the connections that need to be brought into awareness, being ignited for you at this time as any layers that may have been covering over those awarenesses, any areas of unbalance or disharmony simply lift into the light, any thought forms, entities, spirit attachments, belief systems, intrusions, heavy thoughts, heavy feelings, negative beliefs about oneself, others, or the world, all lift into the light. Any traumas, any burdens that are ready to be released are simply released as the authority of love is here and present, the authority of grace, compassion, forgiveness, and countless beings of the light are here. Enlightened beings of the earth, enlightened beings of the heavens, enlightened beings of the galactic, the angels, the archangels, enlightened star beings, brothers and sisters of the light, divine animal kingdom, all here, all present. The divine plant kingdom as well. The divinity of the fungi as well. All of nature and all of creation loving you and supporting you. As you release and let go. The light of the holy fire envelops you, revealing your authentic self, your multidimensional self, that you are pure consciousness in form, having a human experience on planet Earth in 2024. And what a gift and a blessing you are to humanity, to the Earth, to this now moment as you discover and explore and express your authentic self, your uniqueness, and choose to be supported by others who are also on a path of authenticity, spiritual growth, evolution, and co-creating with the magic of the earth and the magic of the stars to contribute wellness and thriving sublime radiance upon the earth and far, far beyond. Imagine now there is a beautiful bridge of light. Upon the bridge are so many guides, so many star beings, spiritual ones, Beloved ones, sacred ones of your heart, of your soul, your spirit, your soul family, inviting you and greeting you, embracing you as you walk upon the bridge. And the bridge takes you over the beautiful river of life, the river of peace. Eridanus, the starry river of life, the light of the stars reflected. In the river, the waters of the river flowing powerfully, 
You can hear the song, the song of the water, the spirit of the water, helping you let go and release anything else that no longer serves your highest good. Anything that's ready to go into the light so it need not burden you a moment longer in this reality, in this lifetime, or any reality or any lifetime as Reiki heals all the way to the original cause, wherever that cause may be, whenever that cause may be. It is a root medicine. So as you cross over the bridge, you're invited to enter a doorway, a portal, Karuna Reiki energies are here, Zonar, Halu, Hearth, Rama, Nosa, Iava, Shanti, Kriya. Flower of healing is present. Beautiful flowers all around the doorway. Starlight, the one consciousness, the singularity, all around this doorway. You are invited to enter in to this realm, into this world of enlightenment and higher consciousness, to enter into the higher heavens of consciousness where all there is is love and the higher frequencies. There is no duality, no polarity. All the beings, all the energies, all the realms and spiritual and physical locations here are enlightened, are made of love, and are fully realized and actualized and conscious as pure love. So you enter into this beautiful realm of consciousness Expand your perceptions, open your perceptions, and receive. Receive the experience of Shangri-La and Shambhala and these enlightened societies, these enlightened civilizations upon the earth what that is like, what is possible, what heaven on earth has been. Open your perceptions. See what you notice, what you hear, what you feel, what you sense. For as you observe, what may seem to be external is actually you, is actually all of us co-creating this magnificent reality upon the earth. So open your heart and receive as this awareness comes alive within you and you may write about anything you are perceiving or simply be open and receive.
The enlightened dragons are present as well. The Nagas, the serpents of the deep. These are ambassadors of time travel, multidimensional travel, flowing and flying on the currents of pure love. You're invited to rise your consciousness into even higher levels as people and beings of Shambhala and Shangri-La and these enlightened societies upon the earth were very capable of doing this and regularly did it. This ability is awakened within you to rise did these frequencies of travel, these frequencies of evolution and elevation, reaching into Hydra constellation now, Alphard star system, the beautiful planetary systems that are present here, creating enlightened society, creating heavenly realms on their planets, and physical reality, beautiful creations and heavenly frequencies in harmony with their planets the beings of the earth have been in harmony with their planets. This planet, this remembrance is awakened within you, cellularly activated within you, awakened within your DNA, awakened within all of your memory, all of your being, all of your bliss body. So open your heart and receive. Take some time and explore the beautiful enlightened societies of Alphard star system. Reawaken into the memory of your connection to it all. You may choose to automatic write or simply be open and perceive.
There is so much support and love available to you. The beings here show you your ability to connect with the higher heavens of consciousness with ease. Stream into the higher frequencies with ease. The third heaven and fourth heaven and fifth heaven. The sixth and seventh and eighth and ninth. 10th, 11th, and 12th, and even beyond into the higher heavens where you can be in all the heavens simultaneously. Herbal allies are here, fungi allies the dragons, the super galactic center and great attractor, all the cosmic forces here, highlighting and awakening your connection to it all. Slowly begin returning your awareness back through the heavens. If your guides and spiritual support team are with you, guiding you down into the 11th and 10th and the 9th, the 8th, 7th and 6th, fifth and fourth and third heaven of consciousness. Tree of life is here in the starry river of life, Eridanus, reflected in the river of life, the river of peace. The colors here are so beautiful. You're able to perceive the beauty of yourself the beauty of your earth light, your human light, your divine light, all one. And with this awareness, take a moment to receive any guidance that wishes to connect with you about how to best work with the transits and the astrology and what's going on in your life now, where you are and where you wish to go. Open your heart and receive and write down anything that you wish to record. The sun and the moon and the planets and the stars are all here supporting you, guiding you as you cross back through the doorway and over the bridge of light, 
and into the first heaven of earth. Begin bringing your awareness back to your body, your breath, your heartbeat, the beauty of your soul and spirit, and say thank you to you for receiving this healing, this empowerment, this purification, the guidance, the remembrance, the awakening, for saying yes to growth and evolution, to community and soul family, saying yes to the highest good of your life, humanity, and the earth, the totality of the earth and beyond. We say thank you to each other for our divinely ordered circle. We were meant to be together here today. All who joined live and all who listen later, you are appreciated. You are loved. You are blessed. You are worthy of the magic, the abundance of the earth and of the universe the beauty of creation within your life where your dreams come true. Miracles and magic and everyday reality of your waking and dreaming life. We say thank you to all that assists us. We are so supported. So supported infinitely supported unconditionally supported in every possible way every need every desire every heart and soul and spirit longing we are supported we are loved thank you aho amen namaste and so it is. Mahalo. And so as you're ready, you can bring your awareness to your eyes. Slowly open your eyes and return. <laughs>